back with a review for the epic classic all-star cast film, The French Connection. Gene Hackman, one of, one of his pivotal roles, uh, directed by William Freakin and Roy Scheider's in this. Uh, Roy Scheider and Gene Hackman are playing two Brooklyn cops who basically bust up a multi-year, multi-million dollar uh, heroin trafficking operation coming out of France and into New York through, uh, they use basically cars, use stuff, the heroin in the running boards of the cars, ship them over and then put the money in the running boards and send it back. That went on for years. True story. Uh, Gene Hackman plays Popeye Doyle, who was based on real life police detective Eddie Egan. And then Roy Scheider plays uh, his partner, Sonny Grasso. Uh, and uh, they really are fantastic in this. And I think you got to attribute a lot of it to William Freakin's docudrama style direction. I mean, if you if if you ever want to see the inner workings of the 70s in New York in the 70s, uh, this film covers it. I mean, you can go on Wikipedia and look. I mean, uh, every little hole in the wall in New York it pretty much gets coverage. Uh, it's a fascinating view of New York in the in the early 70s, and it's a fascinating intelligent story. Uh, all the better because it's a true story. Uh, the fact that th these guys stumbled upon a hundred million dollar heroin bust and broke it up uh, is a real testament to their to their intuition because Popeye Doyle or Eddie Egan in reality uh, worked on intuition a lot. Uh, he was a um, he was a one man force within the police force narcotics division, uh, and he and he made a lot of enemies. But he also was a hell of a cop, apparently, and he was able to uh, go that extra mile that the average cop wouldn't do to get his man. Uh, he was just a, he was unstoppable when he when he was when he came after you, he came after you. And Gene Hackman portrayed that very well. Apparently, Eddie Egan was not happy with Gene Hackman's uh, being assigned his role, and he gave uh, Hackman a bunch of real static throughout the shooting of the movie. Eddie Egan is in this movie as their boss, uh, and so he's able to play the guy busting his, busting the chops of Popeye Doyle, kind of a role reversal that I imagine was pretty interesting. But um, uh, you know, looking back on it today, and even when it came out in '71, uh, I think Gene Hackman did a hell of a job, and Roy Scheider should not be ignored as well because he was fantastic as Sonny Grasso. He kind of gets forgotten because of uh, kind of the dominance of Gene Hackman and how he just eats up, chews all the scenes whenever he's in them. But, but Roy Schotter did a fantastic job and showed what a great actor he was uh, pre pre Jaws. Uh, these Eddie Egan, played by Gene Hackman, uh, were basically basically narcotics agents that were in and around the Brooklyn area and busting a lot of small-time distributors and pimps and hustlers and that type of thing. Uh, and they just, by happen chance, sensed at a nightclub uh, something wasn't right about a couple guys, and they started follow them and following them, and that led to just kind of stumbling upon this huge heroin trafficking operation. Uh, and I don't know that any individual cop would have had the wherewithal to do what, what these guys did. Uh, the greatest scene in this, of course, is talked about a lot, is the car chase scene when uh, basically one of the, the hitmen for the, the French uh, is trying to escape from uh, Popeye Doyle on a train, subway train, and uh, Gene Hackman, without a car, basically flags down a private citizen grabs his Pontiac and just goes flying under the Brooklyn uh, subway train rails, chasing after him at full speed. And in theory, I guess it, even in, in practice, it can be done. There was a lot of research as to whether a, a, a car going 70, 80, 90 miles an hour could actually keep up with a subway train. 
uh, it is feasible, and, and they, I guess they proved it in this film. That whole scene, of course, is a famous, most, one of the most famous car chase scenes in history, movie history, was apparently done without any kind of license, and it was done at the first, uh, right at the start of the morning's rush hour traffic, because you've got uh, basically people that, unbeknownst to them, getting in their car and going to work, crossing into this movie scene with this racing car uh, traveling 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. Uh, and, and there were a number of uh, actual crashes and accidents, stunt cars driving in and out, hitting Gene Hackman's car that wasn't planned. It was just part of just a free-for-all. I can't imagine having a free-for-all like that. Uh, and Freakman said, you know, looking back on it now, he probably was crazy to do that, would never do it again. I don't know that you. I don't know that you probably go to jail for doing something like that now in today's politically correct society, but we have it on film, uh, and I'm glad we do because it's a fantastic scene. Uh, they even mounted a camera uh, on the front bumper, so that you you just feel like you are there in the car with Gene Hackman flying through uh, Brooklyn in this car. It's a fantastic scene. Uh, now much has talked about the fact that when Hackman catches up with the, the French assassin and shoots him in the back. He's, a lot of cops were, uh, Eddie Egan particularly, I guess, and Sonny Grasso were upset about that. They just didn't feel like that uh, that was what a cop, a New York cop, would do. But, uh, you know, it fits the scene, and it's, this is the movies, not, not reality, uh, and it works really well. The other interesting part about this is the guy that was running it, uh, the French guy was running it. Apparently, Alan Alan Chenet got away with it. He was not captured. He managed to he managed to evade the police uh, and get away. And everybody that was captured in the in the final sting in this movie uh, got light sentences or suspended sentences. Or I mean, it's very strange. Almost like these guy. Almost like somebody was bought off. But uh, I guess we'll never know. Uh, so that's it. French Connection. Great movie. Uh, there's a Blu-ray out on this. I've had this for a long time. This is um, an old 20th Century Fox DVD. Uh, loaded with special features. It's got freaking commentary track, Hackman commentary track, and then this too has a... Um, a bunch of documentaries and things about it and about the real life real life uh, heroin smuggling that went on in the bust itself and of course Eddie Egan and Sonny Grasso. Uh, Sonny Grasso went on to make a bunch of uh, movies in New York apparently as a producer. Uh, yeah, great movie. It, you know, it was the first movie to win. It was the first R-rated movie to win an Academy Award when the MPA came out with the rating system. Uh, Gene Hackman got an Academy Award uh, William Freakin got an Academy Award, and this is one of the few instances when you look at the Academy Awards. I think that's I think it's a basically a popularity contrast contest, uh, and a and a political agenda always follows these awards there, for the Oscars. But in this case, they got it right. French Connection deserved all the accolades it got. Fantastic movie. Uh, and if you want a true grit crime drama. Uh, you can't do much better than The French Connection. Highly recommended. All right, that does it for The French Connection. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.